Hey guys, it's Mindy and welcome back to the Something New Show, where we like to talk about how to create a life worth celebrating. And today is going to be a treat. I'm not going to lie. I have one of my closest friends from over the years. We went back into college together when we were in our 20s. Let's not talk about that. But I would love to invite her here as a professional and she flew in from Oklahoma to be with us today. So I'm so glad she joined us. I'm going to read to you guys her bio so you have a little idea of where she's coming from. Sayla Hirsch is a brand builder and as a brand strategist and the founder of Express My Brand. That's the name of her company. Sayla and her team specialize in high impact brand development. Every day she works works with growth focused leaders to strengthen the way they talk about what they do, how they do it, and why it matters. You'll love her magnetic energy and vision to help people break through the generic and discover their better, bolder brand. So that's exciting to me because I think wherever we are, we're all looking to develop our brand, whether that's a personal brand going into work and trying to develop who we are. Um, that could be your company brand. And that could even be the most expert far along brand that maybe hasn't done a recent audit to say, hey, am I communicating in the most e effective way? So I'd love for you to kick us off, Sayla, by just telling us a little bit about how you got started with Express My Brand. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited for this conversation, Mindy. But I first got to tell you, before we jump into how things got started, the energy in the Something New Boutique is amazing. Thank like, you. I've been sitting here watching you do interviews and see all the shoppers and the brides walking around. Like, this is amazing. I'm just watching, you know, just all the joy and all the different dresses. I mean, this is totally a place. If you have not been to, you should just come. Even if I you're know. honestly bridal shopping, I do. I'm like, come it's here like and Disneyland. find something to buy because you just got to walk around this place. It is awesome. Oh, Thanks thank for having me today. Thank you so much. We really like it to be a special place and I'm glad you can feel that energy because my staff work really hard for that so absolutely well it's so fun to get on to this conversation as we're talking about to create a life we're celebrating and look at it through the lens of brand development and I'm really passionate about it in fact I'll warn you now I tell everyone I'm coming at you passionate and I'm already pretty highly caffeinated today so <laughs> <laughs> let's go so let's girl have some let's fun. go let's talk about it but first I think it's really important to say like you know what is brand if you don't mind let me just kind of share what that is and then kind of talk about how I got into it that helps but if you look if you look at it it's strategic and so many times people think it's just a logo or it's just colors or you know, it's just a, a symbol of what we do. And I tell everyone, no, it's not ornamental. It is actually a muscle. It is something that is conveying who you are. And I say the biggest question that we are unpacking through brand development, the processes that we walk through, is simply, what do you want to be known for? And I think that's something that I've just carried within me for years. It's something I'm passionate about, is seeing what is within someone as a personal brand, maybe what is within a team or an entity, if you're looking at a company or a nonprofit, and really helping them see what sets them apart. And from there, they're able to own the greatness within them and bring it out into the world. And so I've been able to experience that uh, through agencies, through private different brand builds, until we launched Express My Brand about a decade ago. And now we get to do it every day with leaders literally all around the world. And it's one of my favorite things. I love that. So what do you guys do? Like if a client's like, hey, I want to um, have you help me with my brand. Like what would you do with them? Okay, so we say we run the bases. That's what we do. We can take you around the bases. And if you need to stop before you get all the way around them, that's totally fine, but our proven process works through four different components. You come to us and you say, I want to build my brand. Great. Where's the first place to start? And that is in a place of strategy. So everything we do, again, is highly strategic. In fact, what's really special about brand is we're projecting into the future. We're asking a company, we're asking a person, where, where do you want to grow? What are your goals? Where do you envision your growth to be in one year, two years, or three years from now? And sometimes people have all different kinds of answers, whether they have been around 100 years or they're just at a startup level. Everyone's different, but we're speaking into the future. And so we do that through strategy. We're unpacking how they're positioning themselves, you know, in the marketplace and who they are attracting, who's their ideal target client. Um, how are they different? In fact, I hope we get into that today, a little bit about mm. how to truly find your differentiator. But all of that comes as we hit the first base in strategy. Then my favorite part, and this is what most people come to express my brand for, is our second base and that is messaging. And messaging is our specialty. We do high dynamic brand messaging and we are helping them convey the strategy, the decisions that were made and effectively and confidently communicate what you do, 
how you do it, why it matters. It is so much fun to bring someone's persona, tone, voice to life and give them the words that just catch people's attention. Well, and I have to tell you, there is a language to all of our brands. Like we did a long time ago a brand study and I still remember that experience saying, okay, people actually listen to how we communicate with our customers. They listen to a common thread and they say, oh, this is the tone. These are the descriptors that are most commonly used. This is the type of language that needs to be used. So sometimes I think we can think we're on brand with like a look, like you just said, that could be ornamental. We could be on a look or a color wave or something like that. But then to not have consistency in your language is totally important because you could have maybe language on your website, but then do, does the customer experience and the staff they interact with, do they also speak on that brand, on that same level of consistency? Is there training on that? I mean, we have it in our employee handbook, language that has to match what we put on our website, what we put on our Instagram. All of those words actually are cohesive, so it sounds like the same voice, you know? You get it 100%, Mindy. I'll tell you, what you've done with Something New Boutique is truly special because you've been able to see the power of creating the messaging through the visual to the brand experience. I mean, that's really the full flesh out of a brand, and you're right, it's not just contained in one area. In fact, a lot of people, I think, uh, misconvey what a brand is or the power of brand and they just kind of isolate it to the side, you know, a one and done project or it's our social media or it's just our website. And if you really think about it, if you take all of the pieces of an entity and all the pieces of a business, even all the pieces of a person, again, you can apply this to the personal side, you're talking everywhere. Your presence is felt everywhere, whether it's in virtual places, physical places, and that encapsulates the brand. And what it's doing is it's moving someone from a place um, of maybe where they're not aware of who you are. So they're attracting them to you, they're converting, they're connecting, and then ultimately they're going to stay with you longer through the lens of retention, all because of how they've been able to walk through that consistency you just laid out. Mm. And I think messaging is so special because it's a tool that a lot of people need a lot of help with. Yeah. I think a lot of leaders have big ideas and big vision. Those are the type of leaders we do our best work with because we can pair alongside them, but they need someone to translate it for them. And that's just a gift that we're able to give. And what's mm. really special then, if you hit that third base. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the third base? to the visual brand. Okay. And it is so much fun to get there because that's when you're able to see the story of the messaging, the meaning within the messaging, the mission that was in the messaging come to life. And that's not just a design for a design's sake. There's a million design. There's a million colors out there. There's a million photos out there. All the ways that, again, there's visual expression. But when they're tied to a place of a meaning within the brand, they become so special. That's why when I saw your logo for the first time, I lit up because, again, it just kind of broke the norms of what you might expect through a bridal boutique. And it really meant the celebration. You were bringing out the meaning of celebration. And you can see that everywhere. And that's why I just think it's again so special because sometimes we just disconnect things too much and I believe they're all the more special once you tie them together. That's amazing. Okay, well, did we make the round of the we bases? We have one more base. Okay, tell me about that last base. I want to hear. <laughs> well, the base is where we just put it all in life. And so we go <clears throat> brand strategy, brand messaging, visual brand, and then we hit what we call brand marketing. And that is where we say, okay, how do you need to then effectively market your business? How do you need to effectively market yourself as an author or a speaker? If, again, if you're more on the personal brand side. And obviously for a lot of people, we're going to highly recommend a website. That's your largest digital asset, you know, or then it's social media and it's talking points, or it's maybe a signature uh, TED talk of sorts, or it's collateral or t-shirts or packaging, you name it. There's a whole component where the whole engine kind of revs together and the brand comes to life. And that's different. What works for one company is going to be different for another, but we create these beautiful bridges between brand and marketing. And that is where the, the business owner, the team, the employees, I mean, the company culture is able to rally around the assets that have been created, put them into use and run that for years to come. I love it. Well, and it's so clear. It's like, okay, we go from this step to this step. And so it doesn't sound as overwhelming as I think it would be without a professional person guiding you along the way. <laughs> because like you said, not everyone's gifted in those areas and they maybe have the big vision, which there's a lot of entrepreneurs with vision, but um, saying, okay, how do we execute to get around that loop and really put out a product that we're proud of and not just an idea we're proud of. 
That's so right there. I think that's special. Okay, so let's go to what you were just saying we should talk about, and that's um, how do you figure out your differentiator? Oh, uh, okay. If my hair catches on fire right now, let me know, okay? Because okay, I get okay. really excited talking <laughs> okay. about this. I put my seatbelt on. I'm buckling <laughs> up. Okay, go ahead. No, let's have some fun here. We're actually working on new resources right now and some new trainings and uh, different type of uh, materials that we're able to utilize in different ways, again, with different teams. We do a lot of one-to-one high touch, high impact brand development, but we realize not everyone is at that level or able to work with an agency at that level. So we're creating other resources and this is where we're starting, which is in brand differentiation. So uh, let me test this out. Let me hear how this resonates with you as a business owner, because we find that there are common threads among every brand. And when I say every brand, I mean, we're finishing a brand right now for a company that is well over a hundred years old. Like I said, we've got, you know, startup, we've got solopreneurs. I mean, if you really think about just the array of different types of business owners, so many different people, you know, in styles of, of, of kind of uh, where they are in their journey come to mind, but they all ask just a few key questions. You know, what is it I want to be known for? And then ultimately, how are we different? And so we lean into differentiator because that's really, again, at the strategy. In fact, we like to say brands are built in war rooms and they're mobilized through teams because it really is strategic. And it's exciting to build something with intentionality. So let's lean into the differentiator conversation. And I think everyone wants to know, how are we different? Or are we telling how we're different? Mm. Are we giving people a reason to choose to do business with us? And if you're not, that's on you because that's the goal of the brand. That's the goal of the business to set themselves apart. So we came up with three questions. You want me to share them with you I want to hear. We're just going to give ready. them to everybody today. Okay. Okay. So if you're listening and you're a business owner, grab a pen and paper because this is what we do on our high impact, big projects. And this is what we do uh, with teams. And so what we do is we begin to break down three questions. I'll give you a preview. Better, different, and special. And so the first question is, how are you better than your industry status quo? The interesting word there is like the status quo of an industry. If you think about it, you know, the industry that you're in, it has a lot of different uh, perceptions that come with it. And a lot of them are positive and a lot of them are negative. And so I think it's really critical that we are hyper aware of the industries we're in and a lot of the common perceptions that come with those industries. And we need to ask ourselves, how are we better? People are aware of those status quos. So we need to make sure we're creating a gap between maybe what is common and who we are. Do you kind of see where I'm kind of yeah, going there and absolutely. better? And I think that you said something important there. You said people are aware of what is status quo. So they already know the basics of what to expect. So it's like, I'm just saying in our industry, the wedding industry, it's like, okay, I know I'm gonna come in, I know I'm gonna try on a dress, and someone's probably gonna help me. Okay, so those are like status quo things, but how can we come alongside and create a totally different elevated experience besides just those expected things? Or at a restaurant, I'm gonna have X, Y, and Z, there's gonna be this offering, and then I'll check out. So it's like, there are some basic expectations, but what are we doing? to be better. And I think we have to lean into that conversation. We've got to dig down deep. It's, it's a grab a whiteboard, grab a legal pad, go to it. In fact, invite other of your team to the table, maybe different perspectives or different uh, team members who are different from different generations who see things differently or yeah. interact with your staff, or I'm sorry, with your clients even differently because they're going to see through different lenses. And we really have to force ourselves, like you said, we want to create gaps. We want to get away, you know, again, from the norms and find out how we're better. And then, we, and then we lean into differentiation through another question. And again, these are really close, but we're separating them and asking them in different ways because we find we dig out more insights as we go. Okay. And the second question is, how are you different from your competitors? And so think for a minute. I bet you already have a laundry list going through your head. Because <laughs> you I mean, I've been doing this for so long. But you've I'm, worked to create differentiation you know among the other boutiques or among the other opportunities for brides. Yeah, I was going to say, what's really cool is I feel kind of like I'm doing this again, though, for the show. Because ah. this is so cool. I, I am really thankful to have gone on that journey. And I mean, it's good to do it again and again, right? Mm-hmm. But um, for the boutique, that's been a long time coming. But the show is my project right now. And I'm thinking, I'm asking all those questions of myself as you're speaking. I'm going, okay, so maybe there's some entrepreneurs out there that are thinking, hey, I already did this and I have a successful company, but I'm thinking about opening or starting a new company, something new. And if you're thinking about starting something new, I think don't just run with it. Ask these same questions. Cause I'm literally, I'm assessing my show right now. I'm like, okay, what other shows are out there? What are, what are their better advantages? Yeah. How are they doing it? Where, 
versus how I'm doing it because this is like a whole new startup for us again too. And that's a great, and I love that you are open to that process. Again, we're leaning into these conversations and we don't want to find comparison. We're not trying to, you know, imitate what other people are doing. We're differentiating. And so it's good for us to know how we're different. And I'll tell you, all the business owners I talk to, as soon as I say that, it's like something unlocks within them. Like they know they're different, you know, than their competitors, mm -hmm. but it's like giving you the freedom to say, it's this and this and this and this and this. Like the, the, the ideas start yes. flowing. And again, what are we doing? We're creating gaps. And I'll tell you the biggest part about this one, Mindy, this is how you stop a price war. Because the way you win people over and ultimately create raving fans is you start to see like, this is how we're different. And people will go way out of their way for different. They will stand in lines for different. They will pay more for different. You know what I'm saying? They will, mm -hmm. they will boldly talk about what they're, the brand that they're a part of because they're, they've been, they've gone with the one that's different to them. You know what I and mean? It's and it's special so, and all those things. Well, yeah. let me, let me add to one of the perspectives when you say, how are you different from your uh, competitor? I actually don't think of that question in a negative way. I more think of it as what's already existingly brought to the marketplace because I want to fill in the gap of what's missing. So when I'm thinking about it, I think when you said that question, my initial business owner response in my heart is, oh man, uh, how am I different from my competitor? And I almost want to like buck up, you know, like I'm better and I'm this way is better. And you know, just because I, I'm a, like a You're entrepreneur, a renegade. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. Okay. But no, I actually, I, I thought of it differently when you spoke. Mm -hmm. I was like, when I started the show, I was thinking, what is missing in the marketplace Love of that. podcasting, YouTube channel, da, 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 da. And I was like, I don't, I'm not asking what's, uh, how can I be better than my competitor? I'm saying in the big scope of everything out there, what is missing and lacking and what, what do I have to give and bring to the table? Absolutely. So I'm saying like, let me fill that gap because there's a need here. I love that. That's definitely uh, the way to look at it. It's, if it's looking for the blue ocean. If anyone knows that kind of reference, I mean, you're not looking to swim in the crowded waters. You're saying, where is the space? You know, and that's really the key, just kind of stepping off for a second, not to, not to confuse our audience in this conversation, but that's really the key to disruption is finding and meeting the unmet needs of your audience. And you're looking for the unmet needs. And I'll tell you, there are so many stories. We won't go into those, I'm sure, today <laughs> at all. But I mean, you can look through so many incredible industry-leading brands, and they did exactly what you did. They found the gap, and they widened the gap, and they filled it. And that's how they became like the, the king of their industry there. And so don't you see how exciting this conversation is? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I do it every day. Now, the third one is dear to my heart. And this is where we kind of have a moment where we get to get a little bit closer to the heart um, and the culture of the company. And we ask them the question, what makes your company special? And I don't think we use that word enough sometimes, you know, in professional settings. Maybe we leave it, you know, for other industries or, you know, for our kids or something. And I think it's so fun just to, I can even see the smile on your face as we're talking here. It's like, what makes our company special? You know, if you think about, um, again, all the blood, the sweat, the tears, the purpose that goes into building a business, it is done with so much heart. And every culture is different. Every fingerprint is different. And we want to be able to let them express that because that is, again, another piece to creating this differentiation. I mean, can you imagine if you actually sat down and started to create a list of what is special about something new boutique right now? I mean, we would we would be here for days writing things. Doesn't that just light your heart on it fire? Does. It does light my heart on fire. It's just, it's I'm smiling because, yeah, that word special, you usually do reserve for your children, right? Like I can think of how many times I've said that this week to my four little kids. But I'm saying I think that companies can be special and um, not just different, not just filling a gap, but I'm just thinking about that word special. I'm thinking what comes to my mind when you say it is what emotions are created when a customer buys my product yes. or experiences what I offer like and not just the boutique but anything like I mean even my viewers on the show like mm -hmm. is this something that I feel I hope that they're connecting to in a deeper way and growing as a person and bringing yeah. a, a community together of like-minded growth-minded people yes. and that's special 
you know, that really is special. So can you give me an example of somebody that like comes to mind or a client that comes to mind that you're like, when we hit this question, <laughs> this was, this oh, was something that rolled out. It's that incredible. We... I mean, I could go through lists of them and cause you're right They're Well, they're so different and I'll get into specifics here maybe in a minute, but it really is just, uh, it's the way they've built their company. I say without getting into specifics just yet, it's, it's the promise that they uphold. If you think about that, there's, there's pressure and a promise in a brand it, uh, dominoes 30 minutes or it's free. I mean, there's pressure and our promises. We're going to make the right fit. We're going to have your dress right on time, you know, for your wedding. There's there's so many more promises. And if you think about it, the promises of companies are, are what draw them to us. Maybe just even ask your audience for a moment, where are the brands you shop? Why do you choose one over another? Uh, some common ones are always like, you know, if I choose, uh, you know, to go to the fast food line, I've got small kids, I don't do a great job cooking dinner. So we are rolling through Chick-fil-A, like about probably three times a week. Okay. And, and you know, honest confession, <laughs> honest of a working confession mom. here. And I'll tell you what's really special is actually Chick-fil-A, I'll just use them as an example. Since a lot of people here know Chick-fil-A, they, they've, they've created a, a triangulation of differentiation. So you can sometimes have a one differentiator, sometimes you have actually multiple and they've gone, you know, as you know, they're culture is so special. What do you say? Thank you. And it's uh, my, my pleasure. pleasure. Yes. I mean, it almost became jokes and memes for the longest time. And so if you think about it, we're going to put that in, in how they're better in their industry. Okay. So they're better because they brought in a courtesy factor. How are they different? I don't know if it's the same by you. I sure hope it is for the context of this conversation. But for me during busy times, their people go out and stand in the drive through line. Yeah. Does anybody else do that? Does no. McDonald's do that? Burger King do that? Sonic do that? Ew. No. But they have brought their people out. So I'm not out there shouting into the microphone box my chicken nugget order. But I'm having this human interaction that kind of mirrors a restaurant within the context of fast food. That's how they're different than their competitors. And they're special in their culture through the lens of their values. And they're closed on Sundays. Again, how many companies do you know do that? Mm -hmm. They made intentional choices to implement across thousands of employees a common language of my pleasure they made a conscious decision across again hundreds and thousands of locations to move people out for better customer service and show how they value that interaction and then they said you know what we're going to truly disrupt our business model mm -hmm. go against the grain of revenue and stand for what we believe because it's the culture of our company to uphold our values. Does that give you kind of a yeah, good example? Absolutely. Okay, now let's jump over to the personal brand side of things. So let's just say not necessarily an entrepreneur, but it could be somebody that's um, a working, you know, young 20 something or any, any age group or whatever. And let's just say they are um, looking to improve how they communicate their personal brand, whether that's on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Okay. So let's jump over to personal brand. And, and again, if you're business owners, dial in here because it's very mirroring the conversation. But I think it comes down to dig, looking within. In fact, again, you'll hear me say this if we hang out for a while. You've got to own the greatness within you. You can't look outside. I'll tell you, the, the, the battles of self-doubt, comparison, imposter syndrome, intimidation are so real. I see that. And I'm so grateful to be a safe place for again, professionals, for leaders, for business owners, for founders, to kind of be able to let their guard down and, and, and share how they battle that. And so we say, okay, that's real. Let's now look within you to, to refute that feeling with what is true. Mm. And I'll tell you, one, the one part of our process that we do that is actually a, taken and inspired by someone else is gonna come out here. And that is where I absolutely love the why concept that was made so famous by Simon Sinek. And I'm telling you, if you have not seen that TED Talk, I think it is the most famous TED Talk of all time. Run right now and go listen to it. It's you know under 20 minutes because he says it in a way that I'm not able to ever fully regurgitate. But if you're not familiar with the why concept, or it's been a really long time maybe since you've heard it, it's so simple. Mindy, it's as simple as saying, what do I do? You know, what are my skills? What are my strengths? You know, what are my capabilities? You know, and, and, and get just again, hyper clear on what you're really great at. We can do a lot of things, but if we really say, what is it I'm great at? Let's look at that. And then like, how do I do that? You know, how do I, how do I express that skill? How do I best, you know, work within a team? How am I bringing that product, you know, to market? Or, you know, again, how am I interacting with my coworkers? There's this how factor. That's your persona. That's your personality. That's your, that's your collaboration kind of factor to you, you know? And then the, the, the core of the bullseye, what you do and how you do it is most special when you know why you do it. 
I have a why, you have a why. It's what drives someone. And I'll tell you, the people that we see who advance the greatest in the workplace, so if you're looking to climb the career ladder, if you're looking to gain that, that, that raise, if you're looking you know, to take that next step, I truly believe when you're hyper, hyper clear on your why, it will light your way. And it'll show you how to best communicate with your boss, how to best position yourself within your company for success, how to vie for the position that is going to ultimately light your skills on fire and help you bring your best to the world. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of, um, you know, a person that would maybe want to communicate that in the workplace, but without necessarily coming across, uh, you know, too bold about themselves. But maybe would you say... And you don't have to communicate it. Maybe let me just be clear on that. Can I say that? Yeah, let's I think you have to know it. So let me just kind of clarify. You don't need to walk around. (laughs) Know it and show show it. it. Maybe show it. Because because I I do think that, you know, as we had a huge team over the years, I'm just thinking through when when I saw someone acting out their personal brand, if you would, but just with hard work ethic and signing up for those extra tasks that are their passion. And they're like, Oh, I love doing that. Can I help with that? And they'd stand out to me in Mm -hmm. those areas. Then eventually they found their way into the career path that they really wanted in my company, but maybe they couldn't start out that way. I agree with you. And so that's it. It's you knowing it and letting that fuel you forward in your career. You don't need to broadcast that to the world. You don't need to, you know, change your screensaver to your why unless you want to on your phone but I believe you've got to be hyper aware of it and you've got to rally yourself with that probably on a daily basis because let's be I honest put it on a little index card and stick it in your um view on your car so you I write mine read. on my mirror um in, in bright red lipstick I don't wear bright red lipstick so I love to buy it and write my why on my mirror wow I need to see a picture of that <laughs> Um, but no, I, uh, also, oh, I was going to add something to that. Hold on. Um, that was so good though. We were talking about what did you have some kind of letting it fuel you forward and, and, and using that to oh, show up in your I remember what it was. Okay. So not just the employee seeking out opportunities that they can come alongside with their passion, but I want to challenge the bosses, the entrepreneurs, the CEOs, the people in charge of hiring, all of that to get a little bit deeper besides just their skill set. And this is something that has worked so well for me is to not just say, okay, what can they do? Um, you know, on paper, these are their skill sets, but to have that conversation a little bit more directly and say, okay, um, tell me really what you're passionate about. Like what would be dream job in five years, you know, and just kind of uncovering that a little bit deeper because then as bosses, as long as we can, we can use that same skill set, but find a way, even if it takes some time, but just say, Hey, I'm working towards getting you in this role or this position. I think that can be a huge um, benefit to everyone because one, they're more passionate about their job. But then you as the leader, you see something in them that you want to bring some passion alive and you get them for much longer. So much longer. The retention, the productivity, I mean, just the innovation, the creativity. There are statistics. I mean, you can see all of that uptick when you work out of a place. We're talking about working out of a place of purpose and having our work attached to a place of purpose. So again, one is within and one is from within outward. And I'll tell you, if you, I know you have that, and I have that, and I'll tell you, even on the days that are hard, and there are a lot of hard everybody days has, in business. Yeah, everybody has hard days. <laughs> there are days. a lot of hard days in the professional world. Even on the days you don't want to do it, or you've got to do the things that you don't want to do, I'm telling you, there is like this burning ember fire within you that moves you forward. And let's get real for a minute. No one is going to pull you up by your bootstraps. I mean, welcome to the world of adulting. Welcome to the world of own business ownership. You have got to motivate yourself forward. And I'll tell you, inspiration will fall short, but places of purpose will burn for years to come. And you're right. If I mean, these are the things that our customers and our clients pick up on. I mean, talk mm-hmm. is cheap. Yeah. This conversation, I mean, if you haven't picked up on the fact that there is heart in this conversation, you're going to jump out of it in five seconds. I mean, people have this, this radar for authenticity. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you, you smell that kind of fake. From, yes, you, you know, know. Yeah. And then people come to us saying, hey, we just want a brand that's got, you know, but I'm just sizzle. Like, I'm like, no, it's got to come from within to truly burn to bright. To truly burn bright. Yeah. And I, I just keep hearing, like, challenge the leaders that are listening to this to say, do people on my team have a why that connects to their role yes because if they don't see how fast in the near future if you don't want to lose them 
how fast in the near future can you connect them from their role to a role with their why so that it kind of connects and there's even if it's just 40 percent of their job you know what i mean it it needs to connect otherwise i think we're going to lose people especially now when it's so hard to find quality people that are passionate about your company or whatever it may be I, I really think that you have to say, okay, guys, let me meet one-on-one -on -one with each of you and really find out what is your why. Let's talk through it. And, you know, if they don't know, that's fine. Give them some space to come back to you and have that time to think about it. But circle back to it and say, okay, how can we, as the leader, make sure that in your role, you feel connected to your personal why and you can execute a job that brings you fulfillment all the way around, even if this company isn't necessarily what you thought you'd be doing, what role within our company, because we love having you on the team, can connect with your personal why and give you that fulfillment and connect to your, you know, desire every day. Because I want people that when they wake up, they're like excited yes. to come. Yes, who doesn't? I know. And <laughs> and I always think, I'm like, I know they're not like 100% excited. I mean, who's 100% excited to come to work? Yeah. But even if they're a little bit excited, yeah. it's better than just any job. And I, I tell people, I'm like, I don't, my goal is not to just give people jobs, even though that is necessary for work. I mean, it is a professional work environment, but I really am looking for people that are like, I'm jazzed about the purpose of this mm -hmm. company. And I feel like my skill sets can be used alongside, but sometimes we just have them in the wrong seat on the bus. That's so good. In fact, can I just kind of end cap this here? Yes. One more thought for a minute. Okay. By the way, first of all, just rewind the last like minute of this conversation and write all those notes down. Cause everything you said is so it's so true because you live it out. I see you as a business owner. I see you doing this with your team. As I walk the floors you know, of the boutique before we got a chance to record today, I mean, I can see the way your sales team is interacting. They are living and embodying what you just described. And so let me just make sure I highlight what we just said. Number one, brand is a leadership conversation. This is a leader conversation. You cannot outsource this to your marketing team. <laughs> right? Can I say it again for the people in the back? <laughs> yeah, don't outsource don't your outsource leadership. Don't outsource your leadership or your brand building to your marketing team because it really stems from the leader within. And then secondly, aside from a bit of time, and we know time is money, so I don't want to say that lightly, but aside from a bit of time, I hope you caught what we just shared with you. This was all about being intentional. This is not a cost to your business. To sit down and have a staff meeting with your team and walk them through, you know, a why exercise, to, to take some time for a moment on your own and dig into that and then share that with your team, that's not going to cost you lots of money. People always think, oh, brand development, it's just thousands and thousands of dollars. And I say, no, there are components that are costly because they're high investments for years to come. But if you really get down deep into truly where the brand begins, stems from and fuels from, it's really just more being intentional. So I just want to make sure you heard that so you got no excuses to build your brand. I love that. I love that. Well, um, we're getting ready to wrap up here, but I do like to end every show with a uh, kind of an om omen to your favorite beverage. And so we're going to pull um, out Sayla's favorite beverage. She likes a good sparkling water. So what do we have today, Sayla? Ooh, okay. So I'm right now on a huge sparkling water kick, you guys. And I am originally from Florida. So I say, give me all the citrus. And so today we're having grapefruit. I hope you like grapefruit. I is love okay? grapefruit. Right, let's pop it. We're going to have a grapefruit. Okay. So do you, want, do you know why this is like my favorite right now? Why? <laughs> because I see the bubbles tickle my eyes. <laughs> Okay, so that's take, a new one. So, I've never, so I've never. take your sip, and I'm telling you, it just like makes my eyes tickle, and okay. it just makes me smile. I love it. Well, let's do cheers. One, two, three. Cheers, cheers. my friends. All right. Ooh, it's very citrusy. I like it. Spindrift is known to be a little bit more flavored than most sparkling waters, so I, I like it. I love the grapefruit flavor the most because it's like a little sour and a little sweet. It's so good. <laughs> well, those were, those were some amazing nuggets today about brand. And again, if you want to find Sayla online, she's got a great Instagram handle and website. So it's Sayla Hurst with Express My Brand. And you guys, that was an awesome episode. I hope you come back. And if you are enjoying being mentored online through this show, please subscribe and follow along or tell your friends about it either on YouTube podcast channels or even Instagram at The Something New Show. We can't wait to see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the show, rate, review, and share with a friend. Also, follow The Something New Show on Instagram and Facebook. If you want a fuller experience, watch the show on YouTube to help you create a life worth celebrating.